Okay, here's the next video. This is um, how I do the receive on radios um, without using a SYNAD meter. Now, I have got equipment. Um, I have got a SYNAD meter. I've got uh, the Marconi 2955. I've also got the WaveTech 3000. Um, both have got a SYNAD on. But I don't use SYNAD. Why? Well, what's the point? You don't need to. SYNAD is just a signal of noise, noise to sound, um, noise to signal ratio. So the stronger the signal, the less noise, you know, the less noise you hear within the, within the tone. And radios use a signal meter. And everybody's more concerned about the signal. Now, I've done radios in the past. Don't try and slate me on this because I'll just send you to another person who uses a SYNAD meter. And this one person has done, on his own videos on YouTube, several of my radios that have been sold via eBay. So people are that trustworthy on eBay, they'll buy a radio for £100 or more, or $100 or more, and they'll send it straight to another radio engineer, another tech another screwdriver wielding maniac, you know, because they have no faith in the person they're buying it off, especially when the person says this radio has been fully serviced. Now, there are a lot of good techs in the UK, don't get me wrong. I'm not a tech. I do not advertise my services. I do not sell my services. Um, I do repairs. I do servicing, CV radios especially, SSB radios, occasional HF sets. Um, I repair power supplies and linears. I do not advertise it. This is not a business for me. It's fun. It's enjoyment. It's a hobby. Other people do it as a business and they'll charge £40, £50. Pound. You know, if you're, if you're stupid enough to pay that much money for a five-minute, ten-minute job, then, hey, feel free. Line somebody else's pocket. I do these jobs and I charge £5. Pound. £10, that's about it. It's just fun for me. So, how do I do receive without a SYNAD meter? Dead easy. Radio. I'll show you what we're going to be using. A voltage meter. Dead simple. Radio, voltage meter, and of course I need a signal. Yep, that thing there is a 1970s CB radio signal generator. It is turned on. We're on channel 21 of the UK 40. We're on minus 70 dBm. Oh, sorry, it's over there. Look, there you go. Minus 70 dBm, which is about a signal, signal 9 signal. It's actually not. It's 73 is a signal 9, but hey, it's, we're not splitting hairs here. So I'll turn this radio on. Customer's radio, by the way. So there you go. We've got a signal. Now, I haven't serviced this yet. That'll be... Um, be later on but I'm going to do the receive now so I've got my little pin that's shorting out the receive because I've got no microphone in it I've got my voltage meter I've got my speaker I've got my signal 9 I'm going to drop the signal down you can hear the noise so that's at minus 111 microvolt uh, dBm 1 microvolt there's 3 microvolt, 10 microvolt. We'll go with 3 microvolts. I've got a bit of reading on the meter. There you go, the RF gain. So that's what we'll do. That'll be the operating conditions this side, my friend. So give me another 2 seconds, cut, edit, paste, blah, blah, blah. Couple of wires and I'll show you what we do. Okay, so we're all hooked up now. What I've got, I've got a reading on my uh, on the uh, on the voltage meter. Zero, well minus zero seven one. I've got the negative wire, which is connected to the negative of the power supply. It's straightforward because that would be the negative of the uh, of the signal meter. And then from the positive of the signal meter down here, I've got this red wire. That connects to the other probe of the voltmeter. Now, if I turn down the RF gain, 
I go into positive. Yeah, if I turn up the signal, I go to a greater signal. So there you go, S9 is like, oh, 72.8. We'll use that for reference. That's my S9 signal, 72.8. So I'll drop that all the way back down. And then we'll start twiddling. Now, I've done nothing to this. I've not tweaked it. I've not received, done nothing to it. I've done absolutely buggery. And I'm just going to show you how I tweak it up using a synad meter. So you go into the receive stage. There's videos that tell you all this, shows you how to do it. I will now this save this pot here so that the screwdriver doesn't fit. Hey, <laughs> screwdriver fits, right. So this pot here, and we'll adjust it for an increase from 6.3 to more. See, it's just gone down, that's wrong. Now you can see that going up quite considerably. Yeah, I've just gone past the peak. About there, 11.12. That was that one pot. Next receive pot, which is this one here. Okay, it's a bit fiddly, but we'll go back to that about... Not a great deal. It's a bit, it's a bit sketchy because the, the signal's quite low on the, on the generator. We'll go to the next pot, which is this one here, or inductor if you're a professional. Okay, that's a little bit more. Now I'm on the next pot, which is that one there. Okay, now I'll use this one here, which is another, this is one of the IF stages, one of the uh, pre-driver and amplifier jobby jobs. See it goes down, and I've got to peek it back, bring it back, bring it back. So we're about 36, 37. And I've got another one for the receive, which is down here. Each time that number gets greater, that is actually better receive for a lesser signal, for a more quieter signal. So what that means is, I'm actually peaking up a really, really weak signal. Uh, the next one is the um, FM discriminator, which we don't need to do. Now, you would go through all these again. You'd probably start at the back there again and try and get a bit more. So I'm on 1, I'm on 14.2. Yeah. See, I can't get anything else out of that one. I'm on the next one. See, not really getting a great deal out of it. So I'm literally just going through the stage again, through the receive stage really really fine now now there is a guy there is a guy who does videos and you'll see him twiddle um well i really don't i really don't want to say it but when he twiddles he doesn't exactly do it carefully or slowly um yeah about one four six and then the last one I think he's going to be happy about 1.4. See, it's not quite there because as the radio's warming up and cooling down, things are going to be changing. I'm touching it as well. So, 
with Tweety Top from I can't even remember what weight it was on originally, but I know it was less than uh, less than ten. Now that's at three microvolt, one hundred dBm minus one hundred dBm, and we turn the signal up. So now we're on minus seventy five point one. Now the stronger the sig signal, doesn't matter if this is less, because it's still receiving a cracking strong signal. You want them to receive, you know miles away so you can always put a good strong signal in and you can twiddle and tweak all these pots with your metal screwdrivers no no ceramics mate ceramics plastics are no good because they snap uh metal's no good because they actually cause um here you are. this is a metal screwdriver i'll show you what it does there's your signal metal screwdriver there you go just drop signal look at that you try and tweak up a signal using a metal screwdriver and you'll never get it right. So when you watch some people using little uh, metal trimming tools, they can't tune your receive properly because they're actually messing with the inductance in here by adding metal. And that's what, you know, is so wrong. Look at some old videos on YouTube of various techs doing it with a little metal screwdriver. That is so wrong. Um, even the little small mini, mini, mini screwdrivers like, like, like these with the little metal ends, they affect these inductors when you try and twiddle them. You need to use a ceramic screwdriver or a really good quality plastic one that's not going to snap. So I've tweaked it up on a full signal and I can tweak it for maximum needle, maximum needle, you know, 30 plus and all the rest of it. But when I go down to a weak signal, you're not going to hear it as well. You're not going to hear it. It's going to be crap. I've just turned that all the way down now to one microvolt, which is now showing about 13 point something milli, uh, millivolts. There's a three microvolt, minus 100 dBm. S9. I've now increased that receive. Um, it's, it's only microvolts. It's only a couple of three microvolts, but... That's enough for somebody to say, I can't hear somebody, I can hear somebody. And uh, if you was to put this on a synad meter, which I really can't be asked to show you because it's too much messing around, but you put this on a synad meter, you're not going to be able to get it as accurate as this. You may get it close to, but using a, need, uh, a meter or a needle like that is the best way of doing it. Because you can see how stable it is. It's stable. Three microvolts. It's stable. When they use a synad meter, this needle is doing that all the time. It's doing that all the time. And they're trying to turn the synad meter down to 12 dB to, you know, whatever voltage level, like it might be half a microvolt to 12, uh, 12 dBm synad. But the needle's doing that all the time. That's not very stable in my eyes. That's not very accurate. Voltmeter. That's reasonably accurate to me. 10 microvolt. Yeah, that's pretty accurate to me. So there you go. That's how I do the receive on a radio. Of course, now I'll, I'll turn the uh, signal up to S9. I will then go to the meter and see that it's, uh, well, whatever it's showing. Just a smidgen under S9. So the meter's actually not too bad, to be fair. What I'd probably do then, I'd go into here and I'd, I'd adjust one of the signal uh, signal pots and line it up to a signal 9. Um, if you don't feel confident in jabbering one of these wires on the back of the signal meter like I've done there, you can actually get one of the inductors. I'm sorry about, about the camera quality, it is crap. But uh, on this radio, it will say signal meter or it will say RF meter or whatever. You can always put your voltmeter onto one of these pins. Onto one of these pins. So if you're like me, and the way I do it, is I would get the signal meter, which is uh, it's actually this one here. Um, and I would 
So yeah, this one's a signal meter here. It's not an inductor, it's a trimmer. It's a variable trimmer. Um, that's a signal meter. So what I'll do is, I'll put my screwdriver on it. And um, on this side here, look. Bugger. Oh, that went down well, didn't it? Like a lead balloon. There you go. And there's the, there's the meter. Minus 16.4. Now remember, when we first started doing this, it was minus 0 0.6 millivolts, sorry, millivolts, millivolts, air millis, air micros, so millivolts. So I've actually gone from 0 0.6 millivolt to 16 millivolt. That is a great increase in receive. It's, it, it may not seem it on paper. You think, well, it's not a lot. But as I'm trying to say, from what that is in like real life, it's a case of a weak signal, five, ten mile away, scratching in the noise until you're actually hearing him and understanding what he's saying, making him audible. So the guy that owns this radio sends me all his radios. Um, he sells a lot on on uh, eBay. He buys a lot off eBay. I've had some absolute crap off him off eBay. Um, Forty year old and things move. These these things move with heat. Um, values of these change. Oh, please notice I haven't changed any of the caps either. I've not changed any of the caps. <laughs> oh. um, I've just gave it a bit of a tweak. That's it. And it, it's come up quite well. Um, he will now be able to hear a pin drop. Uh, he'll be able to, able to hear a Nats fart. You, you know, he'll be able to... Oh, what's that? I, can't, I can't really go into it. I'll get myself in trouble. Um, but anyway, so there you go. That's how you do it. Use a voltmeter. Uh, Analog one with a needle, just as well. As long as it's a slow-moving one. Um, you know, a decent, decent quality one. Um... I use a digital voltmeter because I, I just use it for everything. You can't do the transmit with these because you need a power meter. And if you're going to be trying to do receive, uh, you need a signal generator. You can't really do it with another radio because you could key up another radio in another room into a dummy load with a really weak signal and you could probably try and tweak it up. But the RF might be getting in here and not into the antenna socket. And, you know, so you use a signal generator, which can be bought pretty cheap. You can get a cheap signal generator. You can get one of those little Chinese ones, the little blue blue Chinese generators. Um, you can get something quality. And, you you know, that's how you do it. You don't need Synad. You don't have to do the Synad. That's, that, that is utter crap. So some of the videos you'll see on YouTube with a guy who, who gets... Um, radio sent to him on a regular basis some of those have actually been mine and they've been bought via ebay and he knows the mine and he's actually done the receive on them and he's actually got no improvement sometimes he'll say oh we managed to get a little bit out of that but remember he's using a synad meter where the needle is doing this all the time it's up down up down up down like a horse draws you know Accuracy is the key. That's your, uh, that's your saying for today. Accuracy is the key. Right, I'm going to go and uh, button this one up. I've got to do a full service on it anyway. But you, you, you've just seen me give it a bit of a, a bit of a receive tweaking. Now I'm going to do the transmit. I'm going to do the uh, deviation. Um, I'm going to uh, just, 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 just generally give it a bit of a twiddle and a tweak for the guy. I'll button it back up and. Uh, He'll come and pick it up later on. So, uh, there you go. Thumbs up, like, subscribe. Um, I'm going to button this up, and then I'm going to do the uh, do, do the bleed-over test on this radio. I've already done it on the Comtel, late Manx Man Fidelity 1000, great chassis, which were absolutely crap. I've also done it on the Cybernet radios, uh, which weren't bad but were much better so now we're going to do it on the unidem and see how good these are for bleed over on receive so 73 many thanks catch on the flip-flop